Hello, Richard Wayne again here, video 2, bullying. And I have been very, very used to being bullied. In that previous video I mentioned this guy Robert, he's 13 years old, I was 6 or 7, and he deliberately shot me with an arrow. It was absolutely deliberate. Now that boy, after he'd done that, he ran off shouting at me, tell anybody the next time I'll kill you. I was so, so terrified of him that I actually said to my mum it was an accident that it had ricocheted off the wall. Now, I don't think anybody believed me. Well, they were right not to believe me. But I wasn't going to do anything about it because I was absolutely terrified of him. Now, previous to that, he had hit me he threatened me with a knife. He was a thoroughly evil child. But anyway, let's move on from that. But now, I'm sort of seven years old. My coordination's a bit knackered because I've um, had this head injury. Um, and now I've only got 50% vision, which means I don't have binocular vision. So now you've got this clumsy person trying to play with a ball, football, cricket and all that sort of thing. To be honest, I was rubbish. I actually didn't enjoy it. And if we move on to sort of like when I was at school, who was always the last person to get picked? I mean, I was short. I'm still short. I was fat. Mm, still fat. And then there are some pictures of me um, dotted into some of these videos later on where you will see me as a kid. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, I was bullied. I was called all sorts of names. Like, because I used to have to wear this eye patch. For a long time, I had to wear this eye patch to protect the eye. And I was called Captain Pugwash, Captain Bird's Eye, One-Eyed Dick, Winky, uh, something wainy, and various other things. Now, bigger kids, they used to steal those patches so they could play pirates or whatever. The NHS wouldn't keep supplying them, so my mum came up with an answer. She would make me eye patches from brown wrapping paper and old bootlaces, or football bootlaces, cricket bootlaces. And again, there is a photo of me with one of these wonderful patches. Well, this increased the, the bullying, the name calling and everything else significantly. In fact, right up to the age of 15, I was still being called bootlace by a couple of local, local yobs. Um, one of them called it once too often and I challenged them. Um, it tried to hit me. But by then, I was seriously into weight training, fitness, uh, and had done some judo. He tried to hit me, he ended up on his back, I didn't hit him, I just gently laid him over my shoulder, flat onto his back, uh, with a judo throw. After that, the bullying seemed to go down quite a bit, I wonder why. But there was other times I was bullied. You see, my dad lost his leg down the pit. So he had a peg leg, a wooden leg. My sister got Hurley-She syndrome. Now most people with Hurley-She syndrome don't live very long. Uh, my sister was quite amazing. But she was 10 years older than me, and in actual fact, let's just say, I was an accident because my parents were told not to have any more children because there was a serious chance that uh, the next child could come along with her she syndrome. And I've never looked into the genetics of it, uh, but I do know the chances are I carry this uh, nasty gene and could pass it on to my children, grandchildren. Now, her she meant that a lot of the time, although she could walk about and do stuff, a lot of the time she was in a wheelchair, she was not entirely mobile. 
And so we'd walk down the street. He'd have me with an eye patch on. He'd have my dad with his peg leg and my sister in a wheelchair. And we'd get all sorts of things. There'd be people shouting after us, oh look at this, the Adams family. Doing the Adams family song, it just come on to TV. Or, oh look at that Spaz family. If it was my dog, we'd shoot you. We wouldn't let you on the street. All sorts of things. Why is she still alive? Why isn't she in a nut arch? Talking about my sister. So the whole family was bullied. And I learned to just, as my dad said, take it on the chin. Just ignore them. They're not worth it. Well, okay. Well, let's move on a little bit further. Youth club. I'm 13. A little place outside Ilkeston, where I lived, a place called Kirk Hallam. There was a youth club. I rather liked it. I used to go there at least once a week. There was an old pinball machine, and it used to take an old sixpence. And for those that are young, well, that's two and a half p in modern money, but in those days, sixpence was was a quarter of my pocket money. And you used to get six balls on this pinball, but it was one of the old ones where all six balls were there and you just fired them off. It's not like the, you know, the modern ones where it's one ball goes round and round. Well, there was this kid, Charles A, and that's not for Charles Atlas, nor is it for Charles Arsehole, but he was one. Sorry for the language. He regularly used to push younger kids or weaker kids off. They'd put their 6p in and he would have their go. And for some reason the people who ran the youth club seemed to be in fear of him. Well this time I put my money in and he pushed, tried to push me away. I slapped his hand literally as he tried to have a go to pull the, the what you call, whatever it is that you pull and said no. It's my sixpence, it's my go, not yours. At which he turned round, squared up to me, and smashed me in the face as hard as he could. Now this kid was about 16, 17, I was 13, short or fat, as we've already said. As I went flying backwards, I happened to go backwards into one of his mates, who called me a polite word and threw me forwards, just as Charles was throwing his second punch which broke my jaw, hence the reason why my jaw is crooked and my teeth are crooked. He also managed to knock a tooth out. My jaw was broken. I couldn't have thought I was in a lot of pain. In actual fact, he broke his wrist, which was a bit tit for tat. I'd managed to break his wrist, but even then I was determined not to fall down. I felt woozy, I felt sick, I was in a lot of pain, but I would not go down. No one was going to dominate me. No one was going to. And he still didn't get that go. But the funny thing is, who was the one who was banned from the youth club for starting a fight? Hmm. Sorry, I just thought I was standing up for my rights. And needless to say, I never even tried to get back into that youth club. I moved sideways. I decided to go into the army cadets. There's one in the school. I used to go to a school called Hallcroft School, and there was army cadets there, and it was great. But every so often, we would go to the local TA to do real rifle practice, shooting old Lee Enfield 303 rifles in the rifle range at the TA place. In actual fact, I was very good at doing that. I must say, I wasn't very good at drill, coordinations, crap, etc. But I was seriously good at shooting. Now, maybe having just one eye helped, I don't know. But there was a sergeant there um, who really used to get annoyed that I wouldn't close my left eye when I was firing the rifle, despite the fact I told him time and time again I didn't need to. And also, I was a far better shot than him. You get these little red triangular badges, and I got like level one, level two, whatever it was. I got both of those for sharpshooting or target practice, whatever it was called. 
Anyway, I was being entered for a competition and Sergeant D was my trainer, which is quite good, seeing as I could shoot better than him. And he kept kicking me in the ribs when I was in the prone position, telling me to close my in eye. Anyway, this particular day, let's say he had been celebrating St. Patrick's Day. And he was in no fit state to be around anybody with a loaded rifle. And this day, he kicked me so hard. Now, we're talking about the old-fashioned hobnail boots, with those... They had like a horseshoe seg, I think they were called Blakey's segs, at the end of it. He took a full force swing at my ribs. He took the wind out of me, I was instantly in pain. I know that a rib cracked or broke. And he's then standing over me, screaming and shouting at me to shoot properly, or the next time he will kick harder. I actually don't remember really what happened next. I was in pain, like I probably never felt pain before. I must have been run over and shot in the eye, but I just took the book, the, the, the Lee Enfield, and it's got like a, a brass end on the on the rifle butt, and I with all my strength, all my might, slammed it into his ankle. No, well his his uh, calf. And there was an ominous crunch. Something had cracked or split or broken. I was taken to hospital and x-rayed. Yeah. I had a broken rib and a cracked rib. Massive bruising. Nothing happened to him. Guess who had to leave the army cadet? You see, really, maybe if I actually hadn't had a round in the spout, so to speak, when I did it, I might have got away with it. The gun didn't go off, but I did have a live round bolted in and ready to fire. He's lucky I didn't shoot him, really, isn't it? No, I don't mean that. Now, with all that bullying, and I say it went on even right up until I was at uni, uh, where I got nicknamed the tank because by then I was big, strong and um, heavily into weight training and various other things. Now, the next video after this is going to be about how I responded to these people.